it is so, so apparent in this day and age. I was taking a, a, a master's class, um, and it was on healing, and one of the pastors that was there, he was stupid enough to say to me that Jesus wasn't God until he went into Jordan and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Then he became God-man. But up to that point, he was just a man. Now, it was part of the teachings of um, his church uh, that until the Holy Spirit came, Jesus was just a man and he became God when, when the Holy Ghost came upon him. Well, apart from being blasphemous, it's the error of Essians and um, it's totally false. Uh, but uh, it goes around and you know what goes around comes around. And um, I was appalled. I mean, if you don't believe that uh, in the virgin birth and you don't believe in uh, the sinlessness of Christ, and you don't believe in the divinity of Christ, you can't be a Christian. End of story. Uh, and that's it. Now, um, there are a lot of preachers who aren't Christians, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, it's appalling. The more I go around the world and listen to people, the more I'm convinced that there's so few people that actually believe what the Bible says and what the Bible teaches. And if you don't believe what it teaches, and you don't take it for what it says, then as far as I'm concerned, forget it. Don't call yourself a Christian. You might be religious, but not Christian. And uh, I was appalled. And here's Paul writing to the, from prison to the Colossians, and He's saying, hey, uh, there's some things we need to get straight. And I want you to look at it from a point of view that Paul was correcting people. Now look, there's lots of things uh, that you've got to understand. Paul was writing to people who had Greek tradition, Greek philosophy, were steeped in Plato, were steeped in all kinds of ideas and notions that were way, way, way outside of Christianity. And what had happened is there'd come uh, this kind of Gnosticism and knowing where you all had your private revelation, you all had your own ideas, and you could mix Christianity and Christ with the Eastern religions, with philosophies, and everything was all muddled together. And Paul find there was Epaphras who had gone down and preached the gospel and, and the people came into an experience of belief but they were so mixed up and confused that he had to write an epistle to them to start telling them what was the basics of Christ and what they need to believe. And, and you know, the more I go on, and, and I've gone on and I, I always go on, you know, in the meetings, but the more I go on in life, um, 40 years, the church is going to um, uh, be 30 years old soon, you know, um, this, this set, November. We're going to have our 30th anniversary. The more I go on, though, the more I'm convinced that there's so few people that understand the gospel. Uh, I realize now that Gnosticism is alive and well amongst the charismatics. They've become brain dead. Uh, they think if they receive the Holy Spirit, they don't need to think anymore. But, you know, God wanted to give you a sound mind. And, and I, I believe in thinking people. Paul believed in thinking people. Uh, and we don't want to be zombies, and we don't want to swallow everything. Hey, there's lots of things that our culture teaches us are right that are wrong. Culture has nothing to do with Christ. Absolutely nothing to do with Christ. 
Uh, and so when Paul is writing to the Greeks, he, he's trying to attack the whole thought process in a Greek. Dualism, that's um, the power of good and evil fighting each other in the heavenlies, was part of their culture. They believed that there was a supreme being who was born, sounds like Islam, uh, a, a supreme being who, who actually created two angels, and there was the angel of good and the angel of evil, and they were warring, and, and the world was left, and everything became evil, and God withdrew himself and, and was looking on it, uh, and <laughs> the whole purpose is you get asceticism, that means self-denial, you know, or as the Nigerians would do, fasting and prayer and beating yourself, uh, that's asceticism, and think you can get close to God that way. Or you had transcendental meditation, and people were trying to meditate and think themselves, or you had philosophy, and people were trying to work it through their minds. And so Paul is suddenly faced with, and Babylonish teachings had come in, and Paul is faced with a bunch of people who claim to know Christ and know nothing. And so they've had an experience because someone came with the gospel and then they jumble it all up with all their other understandings, all their philosophies and all their teachings and got in a mess. And a fine mess they were in. And so Paul says, right, we've got to sort this out. And he's in prison. And so he decides he's going to write an epistle and tell them what's true. Uh, and if you understand why an epistle is written and the mindset of the people to whom it's written, you will get an understanding of what's being said. There are a lot of deceptions in the world, a lot of wrong concepts. For instance, my Bible says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have what? Fellowship, Fellowship one with another. That's walking in the light. Uh, and, and you know, uh, it's amazing how people think that means you've got to have total openness. Now if you have total openness, you're going to get your life in trouble. Why? Because if you cast your pearls before swine, they turn around you. And there's a lot of Christians that get needlessly hurt because they expose things that they should keep secret. And you say, well, Christ never kept a secret. Well, I'm glad you thought that, because you're wrong. In fact, Jesus was a very secretive person on occasions. Did you know that? Hello? Hello?